So I've been doing some projects of late and that's got me thinking a bit about velocity factor, whether that be in um, coax or wire elements or whatever you're using for, for your antenna. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple of practical examples just in a short little bit. So when we talk about the velocity factor, that relates to the speed of light in a vacuum. Now, space is in a vacuum. And these are quite astronomical figures. Now, when we talk about the speed of light, and that's actually the speed that RF travels as well. So we're talking about nearly 300 million metres per second. Or if we take that into miles an hour, it's 670 million miles an hour. And these are just kind of mind boggling figures. So when we're, we're building antennas in metric, we normally take the figure of 300. And that's what that relates to, 300 million metres per second. So if we actually make, uh, for example, a dipole, and we make that to the exact size. So if we take, for example, 300 and we divide that by 14.175, so tw tw the 20 metre band, that comes out something like 21 metres long. So, that would be tw so the wavelength would be 21 metres long. But we know because of the velocity factor that if we're making a full wave loop or a dipole, which would be half of that, the actual length of that wire is a little bit shorter and it's because of velocity factor. Now, the couple of examples here that I'm going to talk about is uh, coax, because the two projects that I have on the go, one is a six metre two element quad that I'm rebuilding for a friend. And uh, in the past, I've been playing about with uh, phased verticals. Now, with phased verticals, you need very specific lengths of coax. Um, and you don't always want to believe the data sheets and it's nice to confirm what the data sheets say and you can use your analyzer to do this um, and I use my rig expert AA55 zoom and it has these fantastic tools that, that you can actually cut uh, coax either half wave or uh, quarter wave stubs or you can actually check and confirm the velocity factor so that's what I'm going to uh, talk about here so in terms of the six meter quad and um, you can't feed it directly with 50 ohm coax so how i'm going to match it is i'm going to use a section of rg6 75 ohm coax now i've managed to source some quite nice really well shielded stuff from a local company here in scotland now they've said that the velocity factor of this coax is 80 percent and we want to check that now on my rig expert it has a handy little function that could do this so the longer the piece of coax, the better. So you need to basically terminate it in one end with an SO239 or similar. You then need to measure how long that is and then you can connect it up to the analyzer, which I have done here. Now, it's only a five meter length I have, but when we input that five meter, it's actually just over that. When we input that length, the analyzer then gives us our velocity factor and that actually came out to 0.81 or 81%, meaning that the RF travelling through that coax is actually slower than the speed of light in free space or the speed of RF in free space or in a vacuum. Now, second example is I have some Messi and Poloni Ultraflex 7. Now, this is actually a smaller length. This is uh, it's just over three metres. So we hooked that up and checked that. Now, Messi and Poloni say that the velocity factor of this is 83%. I actually measured it at 85%, but I think that's because I've got a little bit of measurement error because my coax length is just so short. If I take a longer piece, I think I'm going to get it nearer to design frequency. Well, back to why, why does that actually matter? Um, say I want to make a, a, quarter, wing, a quarter wavelength stub for uh, uh, six meters. I can actually say take 300. I can divide that by 50.2 which is the six meter frequency I want to design it for. I could then, so that gives me a full wavelength and then I can divide that figure by four, which gives me a quarter wavelength. And then that quarter wavelength, I then multiply that by the velocity factor, which we have discovered either via the data sheet, but preferably you've actually checked on your analyzer. And that gives us the correct length of quarter wave stub that we need. And going back to phased verticals, um, depending on how you actually do it, whether you use quarter wave spacing or eighth wave spacing, the Chrisman 
uh, method. Um, and I can't actually remember the uh, the delay lines off the top of my head. You actually need to work that out as well. So if you know the actual velocity factor of your coax, you could then cut the correct uh, length coax lines um, and not just go by the data sheets because they could be a little bit out dependent on uh, the source and quality of your coax. Right, guys, just a quick one. Hope that's been of some use. Um, if you've got any comments, please, please share them below and I'd, I'd love to hear them. All right, guys, 73. Bye for now.